Hey guys, Gita here, and welcome back to another Sunday service. My good friend Bash is running a bit late because he forgot to drop off the letter from Dino Village earlier, so I'll have to start off without him. The book of Revelation reveals Jesus' identity as king. We read that he will return to earth riding on a white horse as the victorious son of God, followed by heavenly armies. The Bible passage also gives many of Jesus' names. Faithful and true, the word of God, king of kings, and lord of lords. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. These verses can be found in Revelation 19:11 through 16 and Revelation 22:13. It's amazing to think of Jesus returning, revealing his identity as our victorious God. Oh, I think it's Bash, just in time. Thanks, Bash. Today we're going to be learning about how Jesus is the beginning and the end. Let's take a look at some of the things that are beginnings and ends in our lives. Looks like Dana really sent us another question. Would you rather be at the end of the school year, aligned, summer break, a sports game slash tournament, a really long day, a movie, a shopping trip, a vacation? Make sure you leave your answers down in the comments below. Let's go hang out with our friend Beauty Birdie to get us ready for praise and worship. Doodles!
Like a ring of solid gold Like a vow that is tested Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon With mercy for today Faithful you have been And faithful you Pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. Salvation is found in no one else. 
For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Now say it along with me. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 Can we say it again one more time? Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 You guys are fantastic. Hey friends, before we get started with today's portion of the Big God Story, let's say a prayer and invite the Holy Spirit to come be a part of what we learned today. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you that we get to be with our friends and learn more about you. It's always so amazing when we get to learn more about you. Please help our minds understand everything that you want us to learn from your word today. Speak to our hearts so that we can hear you. Help us to love you and grow in that love each and every day. We love you, Jesus, so much. Amen. All right, let's get started. For a long time, we've been traveling through the big God story, a story of God's love for us and the story that he continues to write even today. And I'm excited to announce that we're finally at the last book of the Bible. It's a book called Revelation. We're ready to talk about the most exciting news of all time. Jesus is coming back. But first, let's look back and remember how amazing Jesus is. At the beginning of the big God story, the first people whom God created disobeyed him. They sinned and they broke their relationship with him. But do you think that God left people all alone? No! Right after the first sin, God promised to send a redeemer who would restore right relationship between God and people. For thousands of years, God's people waited and waited for the Redeemer. Then one day, he was born. Who is this Redeemer? That's right, Jesus! Jesus is the only one who is both fully God and fully human. But even though Jesus is all the wonderful things God is, the Bible says he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering, and familiar with pain. Can you imagine what it must have been like for Jesus to be born as a human and suffer? But God knew that the only way to restore perfect relationship with him was for his son to die for our sins. Of course, we celebrate the fact that Jesus not only died for our sins, but also rose again, defeated death, and went up to heaven. We also know that when Jesus went to heaven, he didn't leave his people alone. He sent the Holy Spirit to be our comforter and teacher, and he promised to come back. He'll come back in the same way he went to heaven. We're living in the time between when Jesus went up to heaven and when he will return. In fact, if you look at the timeline, you can see all this blank space between Paul and you and me. That's a time we're living in now, a time when the church is continuing to grow and more and more people are hearing about Jesus. The big God story isn't finished yet, because we're still waiting for the wonderful day when Jesus, our Lord and Savior, returns as he promised he would. When Jesus comes back, he will take his friends, those who have trusted him as their Savior, to heaven with him. Both those who are alive and those who have died will meet Jesus in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. That's what 1 Thessalonians 4.17 tells us. And that will be an unbelievably amazing day when we get to meet Jesus face to face. After Jesus' friends are in heaven with Jesus, Satan will rule on earth and he will cause great pain, suffering, and destruction. Just as God is always about goodness, life, and light, Satan is always about evil, death, and darkness. And when Satan rules the earth, it will be a terrible time. We call this time the Great Tribulation. But at the end of the Great Tribulation, Jesus will come back to earth and defeat Satan. In Revelation, the last book of the Bible, we see how Jesus will look when he returns to defeat Satan. Let's open up our Bibles to Revelations chapter 19 and start at verse 11. 
Revelation 19, 11 and 12 says, Jesus will be riding on a white horse with eyes blazing like fire and many crowns on his head. Wow, an army will be following him, tells us verse 14. In this army are all of Jesus' friends who have been in heaven with him since the rapture. You and I will be part of that army if we just keep loving and following Jesus. Jesus came to earth as a humble man, but he is the glorious God of the universe. In Revelation 19, we can read some of Jesus' names. Follow along with me in verses 11 through 16. Faithful and true, the word of God, and King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus will also have a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He has a name so holy and beautiful that no one even knows what it is. Wow, Jesus is truly glorious beyond what we can imagine. In Revelation 22, we read another name for Jesus, the beginning and the end. Jesus is God. He was alive before creation began. And Jesus will be alive after this world ends and he replaces this world with a new heaven and a new earth. The new heaven that Jesus is preparing for us is an amazing place that reflects his glory. Let's go ahead and turn in our Bibles to Revelation chapter 21. It will be a city with gates made of pearl and streets of pure gold. The Bible lists precious stones that will be the foundation of the city walls. This includes topaz, amethyst, and more. A crystal clear river flows from the throne of God that sits in the middle of the city. The Bible also says the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. What gives us light in our world? Yeah, those are some great examples. The sun, the moon, and the stars are what give us light. And we also have things like light bulbs and fire that give us light too. We won't need any of these in heaven because God's glory will give the city all the light it could ever need. I want you to close your eyes. Everything just got dark, right? Well, keep your eyes closed. And I want you to imagine that all of a sudden the room around you is starting to fill up with light. Without anybody turning on any light switches or any light bulbs, nothing. In that darkness, all of a sudden there just is light shining through. That's kind of what it's going to be like in heaven. Remember the best part. God wants us to live in heaven with him. Revelations 21.4 tells us he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. In the new heavens and earth, there will be nothing sad, nothing bad, and nothing painful. Since the beginning of the big God story, God has wanted to live in perfect relationship with his people. And that's why God kept his promise to send a redeemer. So that way we could be in a right relationship with him. Because God never lies and always keeps his promises we can know God will keep his promise to return for us and bring us to live in heaven with him. We can trust him to do what he said in return for us in the same way he went into heaven. In Revelations 22, 20, Jesus says, yes, I am coming soon. And we answer, amen. Come Lord Jesus. We answer this way because when we see Jesus in all his might and glory, we will see Jesus for who he truly is. And when that day comes, we will see ourselves for who we truly are. Children of the King of Kings, the God of everything, the beginning and the end. Can we say this together? Amen. Come Lord Jesus. We just heard about how Jesus will return and how amazing it will be for those who believe. God's people, those who have accepted Jesus as their savior will finally see Jesus in all his glory. It will be a day of great celebration for God's people. We also heard some of God's names. And today we're gonna see God's names and read them aloud as a way to praise God and declare who he is. So if you want, stand up or right where you're sitting, I want you to shout out each name of God as they appear on the screen. Ready? Here we go. Creator, the beginning and the end. Faithful and true. Healer, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Mighty God, Redeemer, Savior, Good Shepherd. The writer of Revelation was so excited about Jesus' return that he cried out, Amen! Come, Lord Jesus! 
The word amen means so be it. So today we're going to proclaim that together. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. Before we go today, I want to share something with you from God's word. We're going to be in Revelation chapter 21 verses 5 through 7. God said, I am making everything new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God and they will be my children. May you experience joy because of the gift that God has given you, the gift of eternal life with Him. I love you and I miss you so, so much. So be sure to tune in on Wednesday night. We'll be back here as we continue our Blueprint series learning on how to deal with all of our emotions. Keep working hard to fill those buddy barrels as we are gearing up to get ready for BGMC's epic give day in September. I know you're working hard towards your goal of $100 each. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if you even surpassed it. You are an amazing group of kids. I pray that you can feel God's joy and love as you go throughout your week. And remember that he loves you so much. Have an awesome start to your week. I can't wait to see you on Wednesday night. God bless. Kids are awesome. Throughout its seven decades of existence, BGMC has seen kids across the nation stand and support missionaries in good times and bad. We've challenged kids and they've answered. From the very first offering of $9 to the $162 million since. The time has come again for us to stand and support our missionaries and it's gonna be epic. We call it Epic Give Day. One month for every BGMC kid to raise $100. One day, September 13th, to give what you've raised one million dollars to meet critical needs around the world. 2020 has been one weird year and our missionaries at home and around the world are facing emergencies not only in their own lives but in the ministries that they've given their lives to. Hear what some of our missionaries are saying. 200 million migrants were put out of the cities and sent back to their villages. Within hours of the statement the government shut down all trains. You have millions of migrant workers who are walking back to their village, which sometimes is a thousand miles away. And you've got children dying on the way, on the road, no food, no water. And this is probably one of the saddest moments we've ever experienced. Now the government has shut down the red light districts. That is a, in a, in a way, a great blessing, except the women have nowhere to go, no money, and no food. And suddenly there's an opportunity to reach these women in a way that we've been trying to reach them for 20 years. Here's the plan. First, grab an epic Give Day pledge poster. Then, spend all of August doing chores, baking cookies, selling some toys, raising money. Each time, marking how much you've made on your poster and putting that money into your buddy barrel. Finally, on September 13th, bring your barrel to church along with everyone else. Or if your church isn't meeting in person yet, you can give your pledge online. You will be joining thousands of kids across the nation to meet critical needs around the world. Join us, make a difference, because this is gonna be epic.